博士的讲座。那呃，我们现在还有一些时间，您有什么问题的话可以举手提出，我们有工作的人会听话的，有吗？嗯，这边前排第二排。啊、uh, ，so thank thank you for for your speaker very much. Uh, thank you, Jingle. Uh, I have a question that um, how can I get to get access to the documentary you mentioned earlier in the, in your speech? For in China, can I get your uh the series uh on the on the internet or through YouTube? Or how can I get DVDs of the documentary? And the other one is um, can I have your emails? I'm very interested in the art and museums, and I went to the anthropology museum in Mexico, Mexico before. So, uh, so maybe by one time I, I went to a British museum. I, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will very glad to have a short talk with you. Thank you. Uh, 要不我来说一下，就是。呃，第一个问题是，就是他前面提到的那个纪录片是，呃，我可以看，然后可不可以在网上看？还有一个就是，我想要一下他的电子邮件，还是谢谢大家。Sure, thank you very much for your question. Uh, yeah, actually, I do have a copy of the DVDs uh, to give it. We very happy to distribute them in some way if that's possible. I don't know how we can put it online, uh, and they are online, but I'm not quite sure how to access it through this system online. But we can find a way to get them so that you can watch them at home. Um, and then yes, I'm very glad that you're interested in museums, and I'm glad that you visited the Anthropology Museum in Mexico City. That's a truly remarkable museum, and it shows you the way that the Mexican government has invested in their cultural heritage. It's a big part of their economy, the, the drive between cultural heritage and tourism, and they've invested heavily in their museums, and it's great that, uh, that they do that, and it's great that the Shanghai Museum has a similar level of support here. Uh, and yes, fingers crossed, the British Museum will get the same sort of support in the future.
Uh, here's a very interesting question, and it's been one that's been studied for many years. Uh, on the issue of the pyramids, um, you get pyramids in a large number of places. You get pyramids uh, in ancient Mexico, in Peru, in Egypt. Uh, there is no evidence that there has been a, a cultural link uh, between them directly that has informed the building of these pyramids together. So it seems like they are independent uh, creations, independently in those particular cultures. And it's a fair reflection of just the stability of the architectural design that a pyramid is quite an easily shaped and easy one to make uh, if you're building early architecture. Um, so there's no direct thing there. The jade uh, is a very interesting one as well. And for many years, it was thought um, that there was an Asian influence on the development of the use of jade in ancient Mexico. That is no longer thought to be the case. Uh, there's been a detailed geological study of all of the sources of jade uh, in the ancient Americas, and then uh, in comparing it to ones which might have come from further north in, in, in Asia. And there has been no evidence of any Asian jade or Asian material culture coming into this part of Mexico before Europeans arrived. Um, and so it's very interesting that the material has similar properties in how it's perceived, particularly on aspects of water and communication and visibility. It's very interesting that the two cultures have very similar attitudes towards it. Um, but to date, there's no evidence of direct communication that has been found yet. Um, but it is interesting that humans adopt similar approaches to different materials through time, even though they're very many thousands of years away apart. Um, and there's other aspects of culture as well, with um, the use of twins as well, the twin twin children uh, is another thing, and, 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 and double headed um, double headed serpents. Um, there's lots of elements which are reflected in different cultures around the world, but there's no evidence of direct links.
呃一八五六年在墨西哥七个月的呃一个经历。Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Um, yes, the British Museum has been blessed to have many great collectors who have contributed to its collections. We now have two million objects in the museum, and Henry Christie in particular was a, a fantastic contributor in the Americas. Uh, he was a very interesting character because he focused not just on the most spectacular of objects that he brought into the collection, he also looked at the objects of everyday people, and he was one of the first people to do that. And so a couple of my favorite of the Henry Christie objects that he brought in um, are some waxed figures he had of just everyday people in Mexico carrying out their everyday activities. And so it's the first sort of indication of rural life in Mexico that we have coming in to the, uh, into the museum. And there's one object from the Henry Christie, one of those wax figures, which I think is going to go on display in the near future in the British Museum. Um, uh, which would be good to get it out there. So yeah, a remarkable man, um, and, uh, uh, and we're very blessed to have had him uh, contribute to our museum, and hopefully we can tell stories about those sort of rural communities and aspects of humanity that don't always get told. Specifically in the Olmec heartlands, they go through a period of like real like center of life, and then there was obviously this one of the most powerful communities there between three and a half thousand and one thousand years ago, uh, one and a half one thousand years before Christ. And then there's a period of a gap um, when you sort of see a little bit of a influence going up into Yucatan to the, the, to the east and the central highlands of Mexico, and then their culture changes into a, a, a thing called the Veracruz culture. Uh, and so this is another culture which builds on the Olmec, but is different. Um, and they develop very complicated writing systems. And, uh, and then the Veracruz culture then trades with the Maya directly. Um, so the answer to your question is, the spread of their influence uh, remains forever, because they have influenced uh, how the Maya and other communities are created. But in the specific heartlands where they are, they are there for a couple of thousand years, then there's a gap, and then another culture emerges called Veracruz, which takes some of their inheritance, but is different. Yeah, 
它的它的影响其实几千年，从这一点来说，它是呃非常成功的。呃，然后呢，在它的影响下，它衰落以后，然后继承它或者。嗯，直接或者非直非非直接继承他的是玛雅，然后我们也看到他的这个信仰系统，呃，通过艺术形式扩散到中美洲的很多地区，非常远的地区。然后呢，呃，他作为一个在公元前三千五百年到公元一千年前左右的这样子的，呃，啊。嗯，前面说的就是，呃，在那个奥尔梅克，虽然它影响是非常的重大，然后，呃，玛雅可以认为是它的，嗯，直接继承者，但是事实上，呃，奥尔梅克和玛雅中间有一个断层，这个时间发生在公元前三千五百年和公元前一千年这个时候，就是说有一个断层，呃，就在这个时候，奥尔梅克已经没有了，但是玛雅还没有出现，然后呢，尤其是当时的这个代表。的地诶，遗址是在尤卡塔这个地方，呃，那这边呢，事实上它是发展出了另外一种文化，这种文化它也是基于阿尔梅克的，嗯、呃，所以呢，大家可以看到阿尔梅克的这个影响非常深远，直到现在还存在。啊，刚才有一位那个就第四排第四个问题。So uh, thank you for your wonderful lecture. I have a question about the site you mentioned. There is a pool of water where you find the wooden figures. Right? Uh, so I'm wondering, do you find any other ob uh, objects in the uh, pool of water as well? Because as I know, in Maya culture, there are some wares used for sacrifice. Uh, so could you talk more about the uh, ritual about the uh, pool of water? Thank you. Sure. So the, the pools of water um, are very important places for many of the cultures which come out. And it comes out of this idea of this liminal space that these represent these sort of portals of the world. And so many of the different ancient cultures of Mexico have this power of the water. At the actual site of El Manatee, only the wooden heads of the rubber balls were found, which represent the importance of those objects to the Olmec. But in other bodies of water throughout ancient Mexico, yes, you find lots and lots of different objects thrown in, which represent the spiritually important objects often for those particular communities. Uh, in terms of sacrifice, uh, the Olmec don't seem to have practiced human sacrifice that we know. And also, it's very rare in the Maya communities as well. They very rarely practice Maya sacrifice as well. Um, but mainly, sacrifice comes in the later periods from the Aztec and Toltec regions of the Central Highlands. And then that influences some aspects of the sites like Chichen Itza uh, in later periods in Yucatan. Um, but it's uh, reasonably rare in the Maya world. And so the other types of objects that you get um, in those sites are lots of uh, well preserved wooden objects because it's the only place they preserve. Um, and uh, yes, they're just reflective of a, of a good, good society that they like. 那刚才的问题是刚才阿尔玛纳提这个遗址呃就是说从当地一个水水潭里边然后突出了那个木雕像和橡皮球然后他的问题是说是不是还有其他的东西在那边出现呃在那边出土另外一个呢他想知道呃
你好，因为我在看到斯塔格还是围绕中美洲来展开这个主题的，但是我可能会对那个爱迪生生啊，还有包括亚马逊里面的这个呃独立人比较感兴趣，所以围绕这两个地区的可能存在背景或者文明，呃，谈一下这个全，就是围绕这个主题谈，稍稍谈一下吧，就是那个谈谈全体的。一个是 N D C 山脉的，可能是就是秘鲁这一个方向嘛，还有一个就是呃，还有就是亚马逊里面的就是是在巴西。啊呃不好，那个呃呃亚马逊是哪是是哪座？呃，图皮族人，但是文明的话，那个时候的文明我不是特别清楚。呃，现在是叫图皮族人，他其实主要还是亚马逊里面的呃一些印第安族，你可以问一下他的那种主要文明是什么，没关系，就你就问他呃亚马逊语言就可以。<笑>呃，现在是图皮人，他应该是会知道图皮。I, uh, I spent a lot of time in South America, many years working in South America as well. Um, and yes, both amazing, fascinating regions. Uh, the Andes um, has remarkably old cultures going back a very, very long way. In terms of connecting it with the theme of this talk in art and power, uh, some of the earliest um, sites come from a, a site of Chagrin de in the in the highlands of Peru. Um, and there you get some very spectacular art, which quite interestingly, has some aspects uh, which are quite similar to the Olmec in terms of using animals as a, as a, as a way of communicating the power of the elite. Um, and then in the Andes, you get many large civilizations that rise up and then change into different ones uh, until you get to the Inca, which represents the largest empire in South America, uh, which is only around for a few hundred years, um, but it builds on the success of its ancestors. Um, and yes, so in the Andes, you get very elaborate forms of power, very large civilizations, very elaborate artistic traditions, very great use of gold and new metals, and very large populations uh, with big agricultural systems. Um, in the Amazon, uh, another place that I've traveled extensively, uh, you have a very interesting current research program. For many years, it was thought that you only got hunter-gatherer systems, of indigenous peoples who were highly mobile and moved around the Amazon a lot. Um, and this view has been changed in recent years because satellite imagery of the Amazon, um, you particularly using a technique called LIDAR, which can produce different images of the forest canopies, has identified that there are large archeological features, large old settlements underneath what was previously thought to be virgin rainforest. And actually you get these very large enclosures that show that there were large populations living together even within the Amazon. So there's been some new studies to look at how these civilizations in the Amazon occurred, what they were doing, and why we don't know more about them. And the current theory is that when you get European influence of disease, it wipes out the trade networks and populations in the Amazon, um, so that we never actually get European contact with them directly, which means that they're not really fully understood. Um, and so that's currently in the, in, in the Amazon. Uh, but yeah, two enormous regions, and I could talk about them both for many hours, uh, but that's a very short answer.
对的。呃，那嗯，在这就是说，呃，安迪斯生态学习包就出现了多个文化，呃，呃，然后呢，对我们的他们也使用金属，特别是金器的使用，然后他们的那个手工艺也非常的好，然后很多地方都发展出了非常好的社会，并且有大型的建筑设施，嗯、呃，还聚集了大量的人口。这样子，呃，另外呢，呃，再说一下亚马逊林地区啊Two people, one of them is just really good student who will do really well for both of us, um, and they're one of many, many, many different populations in many, many different language groups. Um, and yes, they are more hunter ever uh, in their orientation, as far as I know. Ah, um, uh, uh, Dr. Cooper, thank you, Zan Yi teacher. My question is very specific. I saw that you have two people who are the 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 people. And I noticed a detail that these two people who are the 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 people. 手指这样握着，然后右手呢是手心这样面向的这个美洲豹。不知道作为这个研究的话，你们有发现为什么会是这样一个状态？它跟权力有关系吗？谢谢。Thank you very much, Christian. Do you have the, the eyes of a, of a hawk? Uh, <laughs> very, 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 very. Uh, yes, yes, the bastards of the power are a, are a symbol of power. I have absolutely no idea why one hand is up and one hand is underneath. Uh, but what is interesting about the back of power is that um, that same symbol of the back of power is carried through into the Maya period as well. And so people often have those bastards of power 
um, that represents a sort of symbol of power and dominance and goes through. I actually have um, I work with someone who is uh, a specialist um, who's writing a PhD on hand gestures and hand positions in uh, Maya art. And the Maya have a very elaborate system of how hands are held in artistic positions and what it means in terms of communication. So she is the right person to ask the question, uh, but I don't know the answer. <laughs> 但是呢他就是一点位置就是他跟陈立的关系这样的一直延续到玛雅呃鸟阿尔陈立推荐他认识一个小伙伴然后是专门研究玛雅艺术中那个手势手的那个形呃手的就是手势呃他表示的这个意
农业能够足够支撑足够大的人口和劳动力。然后呢，我们也看到它有这个巨头呃巨石头像跟它艺术品，就是说当时有专门的工匠，这个也是社会主义啊，现在非常重要的一个东西。那呃会有这个工匠的存在，中间有工业，也是中间有社会分工。嗯、呃，但是呃它的这个范围来说还够不上那个伟大的。到了温塔，就是后面讲的女子，温塔就很明显，它应该是一个城市了，就非常明显的在呃几个呃同样重要的城市中间有一种就是运行机制，他们是一体，然后是有那个权力机制在运作的。呃，然后呢，我们看到最后一个例子里面那个切尔金果这个呃非常在当时来说算比较边缘的这个地区，也受到了呃。呃，来自了温塔这个奥尔蒙克的这个影响，就是说明他这个控制的，就是他的文化呃影响范围非常的大。呃，最后呢，来说一下，他觉得非常重要的一点是，奥尔蒙克出现的这些城，呃，出现这个国家的模式，对后来玛雅作为一个国家的产生是非常重要的，因为他已经给这个后来的玛雅进行了铺垫，就是。各种社会运作模式，那个呃，信仰信仰体系、贸易也好，反正提供了一个模板，这点是非常重要的。好的，那再次感谢这个精彩的讲座。呃，那今天下午呢，我们还有一场关，呃，是工作博士会介绍他在加勒比海的这加加勒比的罗纳岛的一个非常呃。新的一个很棒的一个田野调查的发现，那欢迎各位在今天下午的时间在呃光临上海博物馆。那呃今天我们再次为热烈掌声，感谢公共博士和我们的翻译公司，也感谢大家的光临，谢谢大家。